Well, morning everybody. So lovely to see you all. Um, all your lovely friendly faces. It's wonderful. Right, I'm going to pray uh, before I speak. Um, yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your people. Thank you for your amazing grace. Fill our hearts now with your life, your grace, your Holy Spirit. And, and Lord, just as help us all this morning to, well, just find something new from you. Amen. 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 Well, we've all heard about the importance of the R number, the reproduction number in our present crisis. The R number, whether it's below or above one, is all important. Well, the R word in the Bible is also very important. It's found throughout the Bible, our relationship. Relationship with God, relationship with others. So in the last few days, I've been thinking about human relationships, first of all, and how they're formed. Firstly, when we when we first meet someone, we learn about a person, often just by asking questions. Where were you born? Have you got brothers and sisters? What's your job? Etc. But secondly, we begin to learn how people actually tick. What sort of person are they? What do they like inside? What are their likes and dislikes? Then this goes a little deeper. We learn what their triggers are, what makes them upset, angry, happy, and eventually we begin to be able to anticipate how they will respond in certain situations before that's happened. Perhaps lastly, we begin to understand even their unspoken behavior. You know, the mood, the looks, the sighs, the groans, we, we begin to read what it means and they haven't actually said anything. And we can also enjoy unspoken fellowship. People's company without words is actually quite enough. I think we can say that relationships are initially based on knowledge, but lead onto something that is deeply experienced. Our, everybody is for relationship. So from day one of the Bible story, seen in the early chapters of Genesis, God is in relationship with mankind. Here we see him walking in the garden of Eden with them, until we know the first humans spoiled it all. But the, the storyline of the entire Bible is really about how God rescues mankind from that trashed relationship, that wrecked relationship, and restores us to himself. And of course, the Bible story reaches its climax in Jesus. Our relationship with God affects all our other relationships, as we know. A right relationship with God helps us to find right relationships with others. Now, some months ago, I spoke about the, the tabernacle, the tent in the desert, made by the Israelites before they entered their promised land. God actually camped with his people. In a very special way, he lived in the tabernacle. He lives everywhere, but in a special way, his presence was in the tabernacle. And he was with them wherever they went. If sometimes they wondered, well, where is God? Well, they only have to look at the tabernacle and point to that. God is there in the tabernacle. And the relationship between God and his people was secured by the animal sacrifices. Um, I'm going to uh, read a little verse from the Old Testament. Uh, Nick, if we could have Hosea 11, 3 and 4. Thank you. 
this this is God speaking. Um, Ephraim is a name for the people of God. And I love these verses because it shows God's heart of love in this relationship to humankind, particularly uh, the Jews at that time. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arms. But they didn't realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness, with ties of love. To them, I was like one who lifts a little child to the cheek, and I bent down to feed them. Thank you, Nick. Okay, wonderful relationship. But this relationship is brought to a whole new level of intimacy in the New Testament. Jesus is the mediator. If we ever went to see the Queen, we couldn't just barge into her presence in Buckingham Palace, could we? We even need someone to introduce us uh, and we'd be ushered into her presence. Jesus is the mediator, the one who introduces us to his father. Okay, we're going to have another of my favourite verses now. Uh, this time it's John 14, 23. Very short. Right, Jesus spoke these words on the night before he died. He's at the Last Supper with his disciples. Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My father will love him. And we will come to them and make our home with them. Thank you, Nick. Well, incredible verses. If we can really fathom those verses, we're doing well. Um, quite amazing. Having a relationship with God, I say this in respect, is like having a member of the family a very special member of the family living in your house, the house of your soul. All the time, God comes to live with us, to live in us. And of course, we get to know each other quite well. Now, you may ask, what is your life's work? You may say to me, Julie, you're a teacher. And I say, no. My life's work is firstly to get to know this God, to get to know this God, to love and serve and worship him. And perhaps like in the human relationships I outlined earlier, we move through stages. That's first of all learning about him, then understanding more what he's like, his triggers, what makes him sad or angry or pleased. We gain a quiet awareness that he is always with us and promises never to leave us. Relationships, initially based on knowledge, but they lead onto something that is experienced, deeply experienced. Now, um, I explained to our Catch the Fire folk on Wednesday, uh, Wednesday evening, that in Islam, God is the great and the unknowable. You can't ever really know God. He's too majestic uh, for that. But as Christians, we see what God is like when we look at Jesus. We can know God. We can know God. However, we will never, ever, ever get to the bottom of understanding and knowing him. It's a process we're exploring, and it's going to go on and on and on till eternity. So we can know him, but we're never going to get to the bottom of him. Paul says in Romans, 
Oh, the depths of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and untraceable his ways. Yeah, we're on a wonderful journey, everyone. So, how do we grow in this relationship? We're all growing in all sorts of relationships, but our relationship with God, how is this relationship growing? This is my life's work. This is our life's work. Well, how do we get to know anyone? Well, by talking and listening, of course. Spending time with them. It is only by giving them the time that we get to know them. I'll say that again. It's only by giving them time that we get to know them. Reading the Bible until we begin to immerse ourselves in its pages, in the revelation it brings, our knowledge of God and our relationship with him will always be a little shallow. Immersing ourselves in divine truth, our relationship with God will grow. Now, some of you, I've, I've emailed some resources that um, helping you to um, get to grips with the Bible more. And in some ways, this is, I feel this is uh, perhaps one of my ministries. I've often been involved in leading Bible weeks um, in the last, well, for the last three or four years. Um, if you do struggle in any way with this and you think, oh, I, just, I just can't get to grips with it, please give me a call or an email because actually I love helping people with this. Um, and I quite often do actually get calls um, from people saying, oh, can you help me with this or can you help me with that or something. So please, please do that. It's so important. Thirdly, it's often in the furnace, often in, in the heat of our lives that we find God and we get to know him better and we learn to trust him. In the Old Testament, we got a, a wonderful story of three brave young men, Shadrach, Mesach, can I say it, Mesach and Abed, Abednego, Abednego, who refused to worship an idol the king of Babylon had set up. What happened? They were cast into a white hot furnace, but in that furnace, they found they were not alone. A son of the gods joined them. Well, was this Jesus or an angel? I don't know. They found the knowledge and experience of God's love and protection in the midst of their huge affliction. Now, a little while ago, one of you, I don't know who it was, posted a quote from uh, a man, Eugene Peterson, on the WhatsApp well of life group and I rather liked it and I copied it down and I'm going to quote it now. The only opportunity you will have to live by faith, move in the knowledge of God, is the circumstances you are provided with this very day. Um, we are going to grow in the knowledge of God through our life experience. So let's be encouraged. It's in the very midst of our often topsy-turvy, stormy lives, stressful lives, that we reach out to God and he speaks and makes himself known to us. Family life, work, even the solitary life that some of us have in this pandemic, he is there with us. He is in the heat. He is in the fear. Well, we all carry disappointments and many of us are, are tired of this lockdown now. I am. And the temptation sometimes is to go perhaps a little bit cool on God. Sometimes I find when things aren't going so well, it's just like I, I want to turn my face a bit from him. A little bit cool. Don't let it happen. 
I can guarantee if you feel a little far away in your heart from God, thanksgiving will warm your heart towards him. Count your blessings. Thanksgiving will centre you once more on God and you will continue to proceed in that journey of knowing God. Knowing God just a little bit more, understanding him a little bit more. The friendship is growing. And I'm quite sure that Thanksgiving, when we thank God, turn to him and just say, thank you, Father. I don't think he, speaking in human terms, he doesn't sit with a straight face. I think he smiles. So, back to the R number. What it, or the R letter, let's say. What is your R, your relationship like with God? So, let's really make that our priority. It's our life's work. Okay, in a few minutes, we're going to um, split into groups. And I, I think, to be honest, the most important thing about groups is to find out if everybody's okay and to communicate. Yeah. Um, and if you have time, perhaps just talk about, is this R growing? Is your R growing with God? You know, and perhaps give each other some, um, well, just some encouragement, really, as to how that's going. So I'm going to pray again and then i'm going to pass i'm going to uh, go back to ken thank you father in your great great kindness you have reached down to us and you've given us jesus you've given us actually everything we need you've done the work to restore this relationship, this trash relationship. It wasn't us, it was you, in your kindness, in your goodness. And even now, Lord, you're just waiting and waiting for us because you just want us to grow in love, grow in just knowing you better and you just long to walk with us. Uh, like in the early days in the garden of Gethsemane, Lord, walking with us. Lord, help us just to do our part in and giving you the time of day, Lord, and giving our hearts to you again, and making it our priority to know, to love, to serve, to worship you. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. Amen.